Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 16 of our Let's Play. If you missed episode 1, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. Um, I say this in every single episode, but highly recommend watching that one. It's pretty awesome, especially if you're a newer player. I go over a lot of the beginning mechanics, kind of like a tutorial. But as you can see here, it is August 11th, 1776. I believe August 12th starts the New York Invasion, which is sort of like the final phase of the, the current playthrough. And uh, yeah, I understand this is a little ridiculous loading up Quebec like that, but my uh, peanut brain was like, I'll probably forget about Quebec and they have decent construction points. So just went ahead and do that. Okay, August 12th is about to ping. There we go. Sabotage. Okay. Burlington, minus one loyalty of USA. Uh, I did go up to level two on Sabotage. One thing discussing in the Discord that would be really nice um, just to make you feel like your intelligence is, is working is when your intelligence blocks a sabotage event, it would be really cool if you got some sort of thing that popped up that was like British sabotage event foiled due to um, like counterintelligence. I, I just think that would be a really cool feature. So I guess... Uh, I guess no invasion today. I believe our fleet is just about ready. It shows zero days to fix, so I imagine at the end of today our fleet will be ready. Oh, okay. Well, um, let's, let's pause for a second here. I just realized that the map did open up on August 12th, so let's take a look at the new map. Um, this is... Ooh, this is big. Okay. This is really big. So nothing, nothing over here in Canada. That's good. We do have Fort Levy, we have Russell over here, we have Fort Frontenac, I have no idea about this. I am not, I am not very familiar with the American Revolution, but I am, I am very, very much not familiar with the Western Front of the American Revolution. Like, I think I know a little bit more than your average Joe about the American Revolution, but it's I like I would say I know more about the Civil War. I would I definitely know more about World War II, the Napoleonic War, um, I like English Civil War, all of that. The American Revolution is one war where I'm a little I I I haven't studied it very hard. So there's a Port on Ontario. We're not even going to try that one. Fort Stanwix, Herkimer. That's a, that's a fun name, Herkimer. That's probably not how you pronounce it at all. Stamford. There was a battle there, wasn't there? There was a battle at Stamford? I believe there was. Or am I thinking Civil War? Hmm. No, there, there was a battle of Stamford in the... Or am I thinking... Uh, one of the problems is... Um, uh, it makes total sense. The, the American colonies had so many names that are based off of... British name, so, I, so that's probably where I'm thinking of Stanford right there. Uh, so, Newton, Fort Sullivan, Wyoming? That's not Wyoming. I'm assuming there's a city called Wyoming or a town called Wyoming over here, but Wyoming is a state and it is way far west, so that's always funny to me. Like, I, I think, um, so the capital of my state is Denver, and I think uh, there's a, there, there's a Denver on the East Coast, and it's, it's really funny to me. Port Augusta, Reading, Easton, Morriston, Freehold, Hempstead. Okay, so this is, this is a lot. We need to figure out, I mean, Morriston is a capital. That's a lot of troops over there. Port Clinton would be nice to take. The enemy's going to take New York pretty soon. Like, there's no point in trying to defend uh, Hempstead and no point in trying to defend New York really because it's it's like 20,000 soldiers over over a couple well I think historically it was like a couple weeks but it's probably three days in this so I need to I need to consolidate some stuff here so we need to think about we have we have the the British bottled up in the north we really need the loyalty over here and we're working on it with well we're putting fur traders at first so that doesn't really help but the forts definitely need 
churches, I think. I think that it says attrib um, attribution and loyalty. Loyalty. <laughs> I'm always going to poke fun. I know localization happens at the end of the game, so. Um, attribution and all loyalty bonuses by plus 15%. So I'm assuming that means that the loyalty goes up. It's not as clear as a printing press where it's like weekly loyalty changes plus 0 0.75. That's that's clear as day to me. So I feel like now we really need to work on getting another general. Because, man, we need a general over here. We need a general on this front over here. And then this is, this is not good. We need to figure out this front. So, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous now. I feel like we need to move some guys out. Problem is, we, as I said, we have terrible loyalty bonuses over here. I feel like you guys could move to Fort St. John. And then you guys could go over to Fort Chambly. That would be like one good fix, and then, man, what are we going to do? I, I feel like get these troops out of New York, Hempstead. We could try and hold like Morris, Morristown. I don't really know about Freehold. I mean, that's that's a big population. There, these are all large population hubs. Um, until you get to Wyoming, where two people live. Well, okay, this is. Clearly not anything like uh, Western Wyoming. That's the entire population of that state. That's that's also a joke. But uh, Easton. So I think if we try and take like Fort Clinton and Fort Penn, that would really shore up this front. And then we can try when when they come to New York, we can like hold New Haven, Fort Montgomery, and Morristown. Let them take New York and Hempstead right away and i think that is a good plan and then over here i don't really care about this this front over here like we could honestly give up wyoming it's not i mean it's only 50 percent loyalty too so that's not that's not great by any means so there's there's a lot to think about that's i, I wish um i wish there was some sort of warning that came up and said like hey the map just expanded obviously you know, if I actually pay attention to the game, I can clearly see that the map expanded. But it would definitely be cool if there was something that was like, hey, map expanded. I'm, I am i don't really want to give up Quebec. I really need... I, I really need loyalty to go up in these places so I can just move men out of them. That would be that would be fantastic. Let's, let's move you guys to Fort St. John's. Let's move you to Fort St. Chambly. So, Arnold, you're going to be... I guess the Canadian front in Von Steuben, which, um, yes, I, I understand that's not how you pronounce it in German. In German, it's like Von, von Steuben, but, you know, I'm a good old American. In, in, in English, uh, V's are not F's, but in German, V's are F's, so definitely understand that. So I, I think that is the plan. We'll... Yeah, I definitely get these guys out of Hempstead, that's that's for sure. Get these guys out of New York, there's no point in holding New York. That being said, we are going to go and hit hit this really quick um, and take Fort Clinton. Is that worth it? Because the British might like roll out on Fort Clinton. That might not be worth it. But we could we could just we could just destroy those troops to start with, take Fort Clinton, let the British retake Fort Clinton, and then go and take Fort Penn. I think that's actually like a really, really good idea over here. So we'll try two battles. Quicksilver will have his work cut out for him for sure. And then as I said, I don't think I care about Wyoming over here. I think this let those guys bring these guys over to Easton. You guys need to go to. Let's have you go to Morriston. Morristown. I'm going to say that wrong so much. It's Morristown. You guys join Brigade. And then, yeah, that's. Let's have this plan. So Knox is going to Hartford. And I think. I think that sounds like a solid plan. I could move these guys down. 
we should probably move them down now I think about it. Move them over to Hartford. And actually, Knox, you should go to New Haven when I think about it. Alright, everything is moving out. Let's go, go, go. Uh, we'll have Quicksilver move out over here. You guys can go attack Fort Penn. That's perfectly fine. Um, don't have you go too far. Don't pull a Jackie Fish and get your general killed. <laughs> you guys watching his stream, is it's every time he runs his general out, I'm like, oh no, he's going to die. Which, uh, you know, it's just a risk you have to take. But, okay, so that that's looking a little bit better. Okay, I think this battle, 1800, local patriots managed to create serious force to protect the city from the British. 1800 men, I'm assuming the, the thing is blank there. Okay, yeah, 1800 in New York, pretty cool. Oh, they are, are they trying to move out? An attack. Oh no! Run! Run! Okay, move you guys up. Move Quicksilver. Okay, Quicksilver, you need to get in there so we can have an actual battle. And then Gable's already attacking Fort Penn. Okay, so this will be a stupid easy battle. Oh, I don't want all those reinforcements, but that's that's whatever. We should kill those guys before those guys come onto the battlefield. And we do have the cav to ride them down, which is really good. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely preparing for the invasion of New York. So we got 1,800 men for that 10,000 that we invested in a previous episode. I don't know if that's great. Um, it's probably a bunch of militia. But the at worst case, what we could do is send that militia and uh, disband it. And that would give us a better workforce. So... I'm not going to do anything crazy in this battle, I think. We're just going to move up some cannons and then move you guys out onto the flank. Get the guards back because they don't need to be, you know, taking taking needless casualties in this battle. They're, they're expensive. And then we'll move the cavalry out and do some of that. The British will stupidly move forward and engage us because that's what they do. I, I say that negatively, it's not meant to be a negative, it's just that's, you know, the game's in early access, that there's not a lot of... The, the, the AI isn't optimized yet, let's just put it that way, so that's not meant to be negative, it's just, it's just a fact of the matter right now, um, and the, the devs constantly work on fixing the AI and they've done a great job so far. The AI is better. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it is it is better. So let's let's continue advancing forward. We'll probably move you guys over here because that looks like where the enemy is attacking. We'll move the cavalry out. We'll move this cav out. And then we just plan to basically you know do as much damage as possible to the enemy and then charge them and decimate that is that is the plan so um wish there was a way to turn off skirmishing that's one cool thing if you guys haven't seen i've been playing the gmp mod in the civil war and one of the things you can do in that is turn off skirmishing and that is an absolutely phenomenal feature how are they exhausted already oh yeah because their condition going into the battle was terrible. I always forget about that. I'm not not good at remembering that sort of stuff. You guys need to stop firing. You guys need to stop firing. Okay, let's, let's move on out. I don't know. Can you guys get there? That would be fantastic. I don't know if they'll get there. You guys move out. I don't know what the enemy's routing, how they're routing, but that's not a good way to route. And then you guys just need to melee them. And then hopefully they will surrender. Maybe. Maybe not. And then I'll just cut the rest out of the rest of this battle out. Alright, I captured most of them. One of their red uh companies, whatever, got away. Um obviously an overwhelming victory on our side, negative 111 casualties for us. So we made a lot of babies during that battle. Pretty awesome if I do say so myself. 
Okay, so let's see if we can get those guys to surrender while Quicksilver runs over here and tries to get that battle under control. So what do we have here? Yeah, it's just 1,800 militia. 10,000. 10,000 gold. Oof. Um, okay. You guys need to go to Fort Clinton. You need to go to Fort Clinton. And then Quicksilver, you need to... Yeah, I would like that... Okay, here's the... Here's the British invasion, and it is going to happen fast. Led by General William Howell, significant British force sailed to Staten Island in New York Harbor. This landing will mark the invasion, the beginning of a large-scale British military campaign aimed at capturing New York City and gaining control of strategic points in the region. So, just give like a historical basis for this. Uh, so, the British was at Halifax, Nova Scotia, I believe, is where they stationed a lot of their army. And I believe it was somewhere in, like, December or... It, it, like, this invasion didn't happen overnight. It took a really, really long time for it to occur. And uh, they they created this big giant fleet, 20,000 soldiers, and sailed from Halifax, Nova Scotia, down to New York. So it's not an invasion from England. The troops were already moved to Nova Scotia uh, from Elan, England previously. And then the, the invasion fleet formed up in Halifax... And it was a giant fleet. I think I've read somewhere in the terms like 130 ships for this fleet. It, it was absolutely massive. There, there were battles in between going, uh, but before the actual New York invasion itself, um, because they didn't just like drop their troops off at New York. What what they did was they dropped a large portion of forces off on land. The the land forces moved on to New York, and then the, the Navy came in and pinned down New York and sort of like this pincer movement to cut off new york blockade the harbor and attack via the troops so as i said i'm not a crazy historian when it comes to the american revolution but i do know that much and we're going to move that 1800 militia out of new york that is that is for sure so let's uh let's do that let's get these guys out of new york let's move them to new haven what are these guys? You guys are moving to Hartford. You guys need to move out. You are you are good to do so now. So the invasion force coming this way. I don't actually know where they land um, initially in historically, but I'm starting to think that Morristown is not a safe place to be. But we'll we'll keep an eye out on that. I'm starting to think that um. Maybe you need to go back to New Haven. That's And then you guys need to run down them so I don't have to deal with that. And then I do need to protect this front. As I said, we are... We really need another general. And I think Artemis Ward will be that. So hopefully with our fleet heading out... I'm not going to intercept the enemy fleet, the invasion fleets with my fleet. Uh, mainly because I want to let it play out. That's... Uh, just kind of when you're playing the game later you you can definitely definitely take on the british fleets as they come in but for the purposes of, of me showing off gameplay footage i i feel like i should just let the invasions happen so that we can kind of see how the game is meant to be played that's not to say that you can't destroy the invasion fleets when those happen and it's probably a good idea to destroy those invasion fleets with your navy if possible that's that's probably the optimal way to play the game for sure but we're probably going to do a mass surrender of lands to the british and then try and push them back later so oh i thought i paused the pause the game as i was talking talking there so let's take this battle real quick just get them to to surrender this is kind of like a waste of a battle but uh, we'll, we'll just push forward we won't do anything crazy. There's only one regiment on the battle. They should, they should flee. Uh, well, they're in a fort. Interesting. Well, it, that's not interesting. We knew they were in a fort. I don't know why I kind of like to see dumb things like that at times. My brain just doesn't comprehend the obvious. That's that's as clear as day. So we're we're not going to do anything with the the guard unit. As I said, they're they're expensive. They're they're meant for the the main big battles that speed things up we don't need to do anything crazy in this battle we're just trying to get them to surrender 
I would like I would like to capture them. That is that is part of the plan. And then why don't we move you guys up over here? Move the cannons up. Move Quicksilver up. And then you guys go over here. And what I'm just trying to do is if we can capture capture them, that would be fantastic. And then just keep keep on moving. And then the artillery should fire. I'm amazed that they haven't broken yet. There's a army-wide break mechanic, but I guess if you're in a fort, you're more likely to not break, but yeah. Let's uh let's go super fast forward mode. You guys need to turn off the surrendered. Perfect. There we go! Alright, we lost 14, so we didn't make any babies that battle, unfortunate. Okay, so let's uh let's take Fort Penn. Let's move you over here. I don't know. Shoot. I don't know what happened to that unit over there. What are... Are there still guys over here? There's the big giant invasion fleet. So let's see. Can we, can we take Fort Clinton? Why are we losing men over here? What is... And why are we not taking Fort Clinton? Come on. Okay. You guys go into the garrison. 20 provisions. Cool, I'll take it. And then here we go. The Hessians, German mercenary troops hired by the British, sailed to New York. They are part of a substantial force brought in by General William Howe to reinforce British troops in their campaign to secure control over the New York City. Want to stress this. This is a scripted event. So don't think that this is like the regular invasions. This these are scripted events that are part of the part of the game, part of the experience. And they're um I mean it's it's Probably going to be pretty brutal. Let's uh let's have one of you uh, I don't know if that's worth it. Oh! Oh oh, you need to capture those supplies. So those guys probably surrendered. And then Oh no, dang it. Okay. I'm going to need Benedict Arnold to come down here and take out this. Um and uh, retreating units doing stuff like that is always always a problem. So let's look at our seaboard. We're going to move our fleet over here, not um, not to the invasion fleet. So there should be another invasion fleet coming in. And then we're going to need to bring all of these guys down. That is for sure. So you guys come down. I'll keep these guys in Newport for now. I don't know. Let's, let's, uh, let's leave Newport. We're going to need... To move a lot of troops around we're going to have to look at what the british are planning on doing they didn't take new york that's weird um let's see jefferson okay where's arnold i need hopefully that unit is not not around here because i don't need arnold to like randomly die that is for sure. Okay, Walsh went over there. And then Jefferson went there. So let's move out over here. Arnold. Okay, this is where it gets a little little exciting because we don't have... Okay, you need to look for ships. Successfully capturing Fort Clinton would weaken British control in the region. It will help us protect New York. Didn't we just capture that? Okay, look for enemy ships. Let's see what the plan is for the British. That is a giant force moving out over there. Need you guys to move out of Fort Penn. And then we probably need to do something like move you to Fort Penn. Move you guys to Fort Montgomery. And then, oh boy. We might need to uh, let them take Fort Clinton and do a quick retreat. How many men is this? This is... This is a big giant blob, and I'm not entirely sure what what the British have over here. We could always move out with this force. This force looks terrible. I I think I need to upgrade this force pretty badly. This is a this is an interesting situation for sure because we. Man, is this... It's a level 2 fort. We could try and hold that. 
We could also try try and get reinforcements in. I don't know if we'll hold long enough. That is probably 6,000 men. All right, let's try it. I don't, uh, I'm not feeling good about that, but they are definitely, definitely spreading out. Okay, so one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh man, no. Oh, man. No. That's not going to work. Oh boy. No, that's that's not going to work at all. We need to get out of there. So let's have you guys go to Fort Montgomery. You go to Fort Montgomery. You guys need to get the heck out of Dodge and run to Fort Montgomery. You go into Fort Montgomery. And then this is, this is going to be a little bit of a mess for a while. I think we don't exactly have the manpower, I might, what I'll do is uh, disband some of these guys just to get the manpower back. We'll disband two of them and then we will turn the other two into, okay, you're a terrible officer. You're getting, getting uh, replaced by Zebulon Baker. What a, what a name. And then hit apply and then upgrade to Fusiliers. You guys need good guns. Okay, upgrade, whatever. And what do we have in our armor? We have a bunch of brown vests. We have US, we have Virginias. Let's give these guys, let's give these guys brown vests. And then, I don't like how it goes out of that screen. And then let's give them skirmishers uh, do I want hunter rifles on those skirmishers? Sure, why not? We'll give them hunter rifles. And then artillery should be six pounders. Oh, we only have three in the arsenal. We might have to give them three pounders at the moment, which is rather unfortunate. And then let's do a guard unit. Do we have the furs? I hope so. And then add over there. And then we'll do the same thing for this unit. Um, you're not terrible, but you're terrible. Let's, uh, let's give El Eliab, Eliab Matthews. Very Revolutionary War sounding name. And then upgrade you, upgrade, and it goes out of the screen. And then you guys will get Virginias, Virginias, Virginias. And then we will, let's not do skirmishers on this one. That's because Sometimes you have too many skirmishers on the battlefield. Their artillery will be three pounders, unfortunately. And then we'll also give them guards. Why not? And then hit apply. Okay, so that army um, should should do well. That's a lot of manpower over there. Uh, you need to go to New Haven badly. And then this is, this is looking like a little bit of a mess. Let's try and get our troops out of there before... The British, we'll, we'll give them Fort Clinton. That's fine. Let's look at all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So Arnold on that front. Um, yeah, we, we badly need... What do we have over here? 46 gun ship. We're just rep grinding at the moment because we need another dude. Okay, so what is this? Sir John Wentworth. In early summer, an angry mob of armed men surrounded the house of colonial governor of New Hampshire, Sir John Wentworth, first baronet. The governor tried to defuse the situation, but conditions continued to deteriorate. Wentworth was forced to finally abandon New Hampshire. So it's 50% what? What is this? What What does this... Is that loyalty? I'm assuming maybe that's loyalty. Okay, and I think this is the final part of the invasion. Led by General William Howe, a significant British force sailed to Staten Island in New York Harbor. This landing will mark the beginning of large scale. Yeah, we already know. So I believe that is the final part of the thing, liberation of New York City. So capture New York City, we'll get 30 rep and 40,000 gold doubloons or continentals at this part of the war. So there's the, there's the final fleet incoming. Obviously, we don't exactly have the manpower at the moment to deal with it, but we'll just try and pick them off one by one. As I said, if we can get the loyalty up here, we can free up a lot of men. We probably have... Okay, that's down to 400... What do we mean? Not enough muskets. 
they're all full so that that's uh that's a little weird to me where are you going there's a cat in the distance that i can hear okay not in game that's that's my real life kitty that i, I can hear meowing off in the distance okay so we've given up fort clinton unfortunate i think we already got everything from fort clinton though i think quicksilver is going to can he does do i have to click him and leave garrison okay a little apologies there i, I paused my recording because the cat was not leaving me alone and i forgot to start recording not nothing really happened um it is august 29th i'll just show around um we've grinded out a lot of rep we've got artemis ward that's from our ships just kind of clearing the coast the British are kind of content just sitting in Fort Clinton, New York, Hempstead. I kind of want to make a push from Mark, uh, Fort Montgomery onto Fort Clinton. Um, but I don't know what kind of response that'll elicit from the British. I am building up my garrisons around to kind of help out with that. The British haven't gone for Wyoming or Reading or Freehold or any of that. And then, yeah, Ward is kind of sitting over here at Fort Saratoga. Um... <laughs> I don't have any forces over there. And then Arnold is taking care of Canada. And as I said, if we can get the the loyalty a little bit better, that'll be great. I'm moving the supply wagon down because really if I could have a supply wagon at New Haven and at Fort Montgomery, and then we can kind of do like pincer attacks. There's the 50th battle of Portsmouth that's about to happen. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it was happening until a little too late and for whatever reason, cavalry are just really bad in the auto resolve. And you can see here that my cavalry have taken an absolute beating. They've lost 38 in the auto resolve so far, and the British have taken like no casualties in the auto resolve. So it's a little auto resolve is a little bit weird because you can see here it's overwhelmingly in our favor. But let's uh, let's fight the millionth battle of Portsmouth just to get a battle in this episode. That's I mean, it's not a really good battle, but let's it's, it's just fight one just to get that in there. And then I, I seriously have to think about how I'm going to handle New York. Um, as I said, mentally, I was like, OK, 20,000 men landing in New York. But once it's on the map, it's kind of like, OK, so what on earth do I do? But we're going to pause, reform our line, and then we'll come back once the battle started. We're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to push forward to this tree line. And then that better, uh, it lets me know where our line is forming up a little bit better than how I've been doing it. And then we'll just place our artillery in the line where I feel is necessary. I think that might work a little bit better than what we were doing before. It looks like the British are heavier over here. So that is good to know. And then we'll... Kind of kind of wrap up this line over here so with the artillery we'll probably do something like put put you there put you there let's see and then you're moving out we'll place you about there and then you can go up into this gap over here and then that's kind of kind of a little bit of my idea at the moment and then you guys need you all to move up and then the cavalry they'll do they'll do their thing eventually move out over here and then you guys can can move back a little we'll move this artillery up you guys can move back you guys can move back and then we do need we do need so oh, that's not okay good doesn't look like i actually moved them need a bunch of guys going on hold because that gives you the 15 percent what do you call it? 15%... Words are escaping me. Holy cow. The 15% cover. So that's... No, I didn't want you guys going that far. Also allows me to, you know, place guys in the line if I remember not to have them way away. Forgot about Quicksilver. Let's see. I wonder what we can do with the cavalry. The... But... Yeah... I don't know, this plan might not be as good. The The enemy was supposed to, like, retreat immediately, and it's not... It doesn't always go that way, that is, that is for sure. I've seen some interesting tactics on the Discord that, um, that are 
kind of, well, I mean, interesting. <laughs> That's the, the best way to put it. Can we, can we move up? You guys move up. And, uh, kind of, kind of some cool, interesting tactics, to be honest. Where's von Steuben? Yeah, he's German. At least I think, I'm pretty sure von, von Steuben is German, right? I wonder if we can, if we can get this artillery, that would be, that'd be pretty <laughs> awesome if we can just, you know, hit the artillery really quick. Uh, we'll probably take some casualties, but, I mean, that's... Man, British artillery is so hard to take out. Pretty, pretty interesting how, how difficult it is to take out. Okay, keep pushing up while we do that. You guys are taking an absolute beating. Man, that, that artillery won, won the battle against our cavalry. Yeah, I, I've mentioned this in the Discord a little bit, and they shattered. Uh, the, the British artillery, their, their crew gets brown besses. So they're really good in combat, really good in combat. And um, it's not that I want artillery to be amazing, but I would like the British and American artillery crews to be somewhat similar in their capabilities. I, I feel like that would be, I mean, it, would, it makes sense in my mind. I don't know. What do you guys think? Should, should the American British artillery kind of have the same combat capabilities as one another? Because you just saw right there, if you saw seen other battles that we've done, when the British charge our artillery, it it folds. It it folds really really fast. Now, keep in mind, if it's militia artillery, I'm completely fine with militia artillery folding um, very fast a melee. I, I'm perfectly fine with that. But when it comes to when it comes to the regulars, I, I would like the American regulars to be you know, on par with the British. So what are your guys' thought on that? How would you, how would you do that? Panda Kraut says, the problem is there's not a good way to change the weapons of the artillery crew because like if you've ever, if you ever built artillery crew for the Americans, it, you, you need, you need civilian muskets to recruit them. But nowhere in the artillery does it actually say that it takes civilian muskets. That's that's something to keep in mind there. You guys need to become friends. You guys could join up over here. I feel like we could really start pushing forward. So I, I don't know if there's an easy fix based on what Pandakraut was saying. It sounds like it's a, a lot more complicated than just like being able to upgrade their weapons. There's some sort of coding in there that makes it more more difficult. I need to be more aggressive with my my cavalry at the moment. Although our aggression with our cavalry hurt us earlier. Let's move on. Uh, von Steuben. He's he's von von Steuben, but or as as we say in America, von Steuben. I always love saying saying names, especially like German names are always fun to say because it's. It's such a similar language to what we speak. Like, it's very similar to English, but it's at the same time, it's not. And I always, I always like that. Like, when I was learning German, I was like, holy cow, this language is incredibly easy to learn. And, but at the same time, it has some very bizarre little quirks in it that are um, very unique to, to German. I mean, well, I don't know if it's unique to German, but coming from learning English and Spanish, it definitely feels unique. And things like combining words together, uh, I mean, I guess other languages kind of do that, but the, the German language takes it to a whole new level where they're like, here's, you know, like, my favorite color is one single word <laughs> kind of kind of thing. You're like, okay, that's that's interesting. And then numbers. Numbers are absolutely crazy in the German language. Numbers are because they're, they're they're a single word, and you say the numbers backwards compared to English. So, like let's just say like twenty one, right? Like ein einundzwanzig. So you say like one and twenty if you literally translated it to English, whereas we say twenty one or twenty and one, kind of like in Spanish, like um, 21. 
is 21, so you, you say the... You say the first digit first in those languages, whereas in German, as I said, you say the last digit first, and that, that got really confusing to me. I don't know why I'm talking about language, but this battle's basically over. Um, I don't know if we'll catch the rest of them. Uh, it started out messy, but it got a little bit better as the battle went on. So we captured a bunch of them. You know, the 800th Battle of Portsmouth, that cemetery is just insane. Our prison holds are insane. I thought there were prisoner exchanges in this game. I thought they implemented that into the game and um doesn't seem like <laughs> 3,394 prisoner or no, yeah, prisoners. There's only 6,287 workforce over here, which I don't think workforce is actually your population. Yeah, here's the population. So your workforce is probably like able-bodied men is what I would assume. Um so that that was a that was an interesting battle. Our, our cav ooh, got absolutely decimated. Not not good. And let's let's work on bringing back another cav group. I don't know if we have the horses for that. It'll be close. Looks like they all surrendered, so that's that's perfect. I would like you guys, however, um, kind of do all of that okay so what is what is our fleet doing they're going out here to go kill more enemy ships we have tons tons of reputation so we'll get a fifth general let's just do that let's grab nathaniel green he will be our fifth general this time i have remembered to actually hit record wow this fleet is i mean i would run away too from uss america quicksilver fort knox olive branch indefatigable Washington, New York, and Massachusetts. I, I would run to or sail away as the correct terminology. Why are you guys just all standing about? Because I told you to. That's the correct answer. I actually gave them that order. Why are you not making it to Montreal? So yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm at a little bit of a loss what to do here. It's just about to be September. Okay, let's look at our headquarters. We got Nathaniel Green, we, so we don't need Horatio Gates. I'm kind of thinking of grabbing these named regiments. I think that would be cool. So let's grab, grab the named regiments, clear all of that stuff out. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm not using... Oh, we lost a production point somewhere. Why is that? Oh, is colony management... Who? Okay. Oh, but we own New Jersey. What do we want to do in New Jersey? I guess we should start constructing stuff. Let's do construction in New Jersey. Uh, Pennsylvania, we don't have much over here. Quebec is doing construction. Oh, that sucks, because we were doing construction in New York. Okay. Ah, oh, man, we really need to retake New York. So, down here, I feel like... Is loyalty increasing? Loyalty is increasing. Ooh! Oh! Oh! Rum distilleries are in the game! Okay, so you unlock the New York Theater and rum distilleries are there. Way cool! I want to build one. So rum, Weaver's House... Um, looks like grain mills are not in over here, but let's build a... Let's build a rum distillery. We don't, we don't have those yet. And then this place... Could do... Stable blacksmith. What's your your loyalty? And it's going up. That's good. You can always do a weaver's house. Weaver's houses are always good. What about Easton? Um, you can do okay. So, fur is up north, which makes sense. And then down here is rum, which I don't know the historical like. Well, I guess further you go south. But that, that's moonshine. I don't know, they probably make rum too. I'm not... Uh, let me know in the comments below, like... Is is rum uh, a regional thing in the colonies? Like, when I think of rum, I think of the Caribbean. But I don't know about, like, rum making in the United States, where it originated. So if anybody knows, I always love the historical knowledge that you guys have. Some of you are just like, yeah, let's build rum. Who doesn't like rum? Well, I mean... 
I don't drink anymore, but when I did drink, I liked rum. When I feel like a stable over here would be good. Stable? Did I say that right? I feel like I slurred my word right there. And then I, I think this might be a good ending point for the episode. I kind of need a an idea of what to do here. Um, if I should maybe like move some forces away, Portsmouth, maybe they don't need all of that, but I'm still worried about the north and I, I would like to, you know, it's one of those things where you would like to have something and not need it, then need it and not have it. I feel like it's just the problem of having 12,000 men in New York. If we could, if we could knock it down to 6,000 that would be great. We could take Fort Clinton. That's a two-star fort, but if we could take it, I don't. I doubt the British will sit idle and do nothing. That's the problem there. Five, five furs is huge. We're doing pretty well on money. I had the opportunity to capture a 68-gun ship, but I just went with the rep because we still have a ship in in here for 33,000. And then if you look at our goods, I mean, we have... 14 furs and storage we have we have so many provisions textiles we kind of need we'll start making rum that's cool we have so much ammunition resources we can i mean we can always sell resources we don't need this many resources and then cannons we still have tons of extra cannons about and we're building up Ooh, we finally have four 12 pounders so we can put those in a regiment i think that would be cool and um i did go in and change so i upgraded like we have tons of regulars now our officers are a little low but that's fine but we can start turning these into like okay you guys get 12 pounders and that opens up those four pounders for i don't know you're you're in a fort you get a you get a four pounder how about how about that you're you're upgraded Upgrading those that fort wouldn't be a bad idea. I'm still worried about over here because I believe there is a like Fort Saratoga kind of attack thing. So I could. We probably need a couple more militia. Really, if I could get a regular in Fort Lavelle, I would feel really good. So we have two over there. Oh, we have a new new general. What am I doing? Nathaniel Green. I think that means it's time for me to, you know, stop doing what I'm doing. Where's Nathaniel Green? He's over at Boston. So we could have Nathaniel Green help out over here. I kind of want uh, von, von Steuben, von Steuben. I think I pronounced that wrong, even though I tried right there. That's, that's really sad. All right, Nathaniel Green, you'll... Ooh. You're really good. You start as a two. That's really good. Um, what do I want over here? Man, I like I like willpower. I like willpower a lot. I like not retreating. Not retreating is a fantastic thing. Yeah, let's have uh Nathaniel Green like go over here. You can go over here, and I think that's a good place to end this episode. So from you guys, I would love to know what, what your thoughts are and what I should do next in the campaign how to how to attack Fort Clinton, New York, and Hempstead because we do want New York back. That's uh you know, it's it's an important place in in America. And also it's driving me nuts that we don't have have this. Anyways, uh that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTube jazz. If you haven't checked out my Ultimate General Civil War series, I highly recommend checking that out. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to episode one. We are playing as the Confederates and we are using the GMP mod and that's made by the same people who make this game. And personally, I like that style of game a little bit more. It's a linear campaign as opposed to the sandbox. I just, I really like RPG games. So games where I really get invested in my units and my officers, I absolutely love that. So check that out. Link is in the top right hand corner. And that is it for today's episode. As always, guys, until next time.